Hello, how's it going everyone? We have two videos before the end of the year. One of the new decks from the new main box, Cosmo and Magical Musketeer. As you could tell from the title, this one is about Magical Musketeer. So for the last time this year, and with no further ado, enjoy. So for this build, we are playing the skill Balance. And what this does in a 20 card deck, um, the description is quite vague, but what it means is that if you have at least 6 monsters, at least 6 spells and at least 6 traps, your opening hand will always have at least 1 monster, 1 spell and 1 trap. So let's answer the question from the get go which is how good is this deck? And I think it's fairly decent, I think it's a pretty good deck. It's not amazing, and I think what makes it not amazing is that you can't always uh, deal with large monsters in big quantities, so you have struggles sometimes against Mech Knight and stuff like Odd Eyes because of that, and Dark Hole might not be fast enough to help you beat that because you will not be alive to use Dark Hole. Um, <laughs> something like maybe needle sealing could be a consideration to help you with that. The reason as to why I'm not really playing any kind of regular traps here is because I want to make my boards not very weak to the combo decks which summon Nightmare Phoenix, because all of my back row apart from Lance is going to be in the hand, because these cards all let us use our musket spells and traps from the hand, for which I'm playing free cross domination, free desperado, Two Needle and one Fiendish Deal. I'm playing the one Fiendish Deal because cards like Dark Hole um, and Ceiling are quite popular. Um, and while Lance does tend to beat those cards to a degree, you want to have the option to protect all of your monsters from cards like Dark Hole, Treacherous, and Needle Ceiling because Lance can only protect one of your monsters from that. The reason as to why I'm playing Free Lance is because this deck has a very big weakness to Book of Moon, um, because if you go first and they Book of Moon you, or they Dark Hole you and you don't have the Fiendish Deal, then you cannot use any of your Musket Spell and Traps, because they all need you to have a Musket Monster, and that means it has to be face up. Then you don't have to play Pots, but I think Pots really good because it can dig for either Lance or it, it can dig for one of these cards. The musket spell that I'm not playing is Steady Hands uh, because while it's very good um, I find that most of the time where you would be searching this searching for cross dom is normally just better especially when doubling the attack of a small monster makes it still small because these monsters are not particularly large especially if you are not playing the type of binds if you are playing type of binds then this card might be a bit better i play all of the good monsters but the only one that i play more than one of is caspar and that's because when you're starting the duel i think the best one to see in your first turn in your opening hand is caspar because that one can get you straight to whatever you need whereas doc needs stuff in graveyard starfire needs you to have multiple spells and traps in the hand. Kid Brave is very good for starting the duel, but normally I try and pull it from the deck with Starfire instead, since I tend to find that starting the duel I would prefer to have Caspar to search for whatever I need, um, as opposed to trying to draw into it with Kid Brave. So while Balance does give you good consistency, it does have a pretty big drawback, which is that until you end your first main phase, you cannot activate any monster effects or special summon. But what that does mean is that you can go to your battle phase or your end phase, and then you can use the effects of Caspar, Starfire, Kid Brave and Doc, and then beyond that point you can play as normally anyway. It can definitely suck sometimes though, because you might miss out on a search from Caspar, a summon from Starfire, or a draw from Kid Brave on your first turn, but I think that getting that guaranteed consistency of opening one monster, one spell, and one trap from balance is very, very valuable. Because the issue with any other skill is that you can break on opening maybe three monsters, one spell, or four monsters, or four back row, and then not have any play. 
Whereas with balance, you physically cannot brick. Bricking is impossible in this deck. It is 100% consistent. So while it is a pretty big drawback from the skill, I think that it feels worth it. The extra deck isn't too important. I play stuff like Giga Brilliant to climb into Core Barge to then climb into Gaia Charger, which is pretty good. But the card that I've summoned the most so far is actually Acid Golem. Only Doc plus Gaia Charger after you go from Brilliant to Core Barge to Gaia is 4k, but any of them paired with Golem is over 4k. And yeah, enjoy the gameplay. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to face any meta decks, but I think that despite that, I was able to demonstrate how the deck works against some pretty high rogue tier decks. But yeah, enjoy. So we have a pretty balanced hand here, thanks to balance. We're going to go ahead and duality. Um, I guess we're going to grab a... Hmm... Let's grab a Caspar here. Then we'll go normal summon Caspar. Um, set a Lance. We'll set the Lance probably here. Then we'll pass him back. But it is kind of a um, argument to set the Lance here. The only issue though is that like if we set Lance here and there's no Book of Moon, we might want to we might end up firing this off a bit earlier than um uh, than we might might want to. Tanky, that's fine. Grabbing Isna to hand, okay. I think I have to do this now. Yeah, I have to preemptively do this, I feel like. Do it now. Take out the MST. And Caspar to search for uh, cross domination. I'm gonna chain cross domination to negate and to make you a zero. So in the end phase, it will not return back to the hand, but it will return to sixteen. Or 17, I guess, because of a tanky. Top deck dancing needle. Get rid of duality. As long as we didn't draw a monster there, we would have been in a good spot. Uh, we're going to pick up a... Um, a Desperado here. We're going to normal summon a dock. And we're going to use Desperado in this column to pop the Kamal 1. And then Dock will trigger to give us back the Cross Manation. Then we can move to Battle Phase. Attack for 14. And we're not going to attack with this because that would give them the death neutral, which we can probably presume they are using because we are playing as Yugi. There is delay in the hand as well. But thankfully, our deck isn't too weak to back raise. Stuff like MST doesn't hurt this deck too much, which is quite nice. Book of Moon does hurt quite a bit, uh, but that's why we play three copies of Lance. I'm gonna set one, we're gonna end turn. Um, hmm. It's tempting to end phase cross dom to then get a search off the Caspar for a monster, but I don't think that is the right thing to do here. No. Draw. Ooh, that's pretty good. We're gonna normal summon the Starfire. Then move to battle phase. We shall attack with Caspar first. We saw last time that we had a delay on a Kyroid, most likely. Going for 14. Okay, we're probably going to Kyroid here. 
I'm not going to attack with a Starfire because if they get below a thousand, that does put us put us at risk of um, Utopia Ray. So instead, we're just going to do this, which is cross storm on this, and then Doc will add back the needle. Then we can needle and crap another Desperado to hand. Then dock. Or actually add another um cross I'm sorry. So yeah, we're going to add back the needle. And we're going to needle to banish the kite roids and karma two. And then cast part of search will grab another cross domination. And then we're going to pass on this. I was considering attacking with this as well, but I didn't want to be at risk of losing to Utopia Ray. And there we go. GG's. I think when you open two monsters and two spells or traps, that's when Caspar is better than Starfire. Whereas if you only open one monster, that's when Starfire, I think, is normally better. I will set Lance in this zone, and then pass them. There's the Infernity Sage. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Ditching their entire hand. They're playing General. Okay. That's pretty scary. Um. Hmm. Okay. So General can... Revive. Um, it can revive Sage and Necrofear, but the effects will be negated. So, that's fine. I don't mind if they do that here. Because if I shotgun this to get to Needle, then I would be in a bad spot if this was um, Launcher face down. So, we let this go through. Shall I have a ghost? Top deck launcher. I go into Synchro 5 to make um, Azusa. Uh, sure. That's okay. Yeah. If this is if this is a launcher, we can let them activate this first. Um because this doesn't really threaten too much. Yeah, because they can just go battle phase, but then I can just go Desperado. We go attack. We go Desperado. To pop. And then Casper effect. Suppression to negate Casper. Um, well, uh, if I don't Lance here, do I have game next turn? So therefore, I think that I do Lance this. And then we're going to use Caspar to search for a dancing needle. Then they pass turn. Draw for turn. You will go normal summon Starfire. Then we're going to go activate the dancing needle. Banishing one, two, three. And then cast Martyr Search. Uh, that will grab us a, a Desperado. Activate this. We destroy this. So that goes poof. 
And then Starfire activates. Same Conjurer. That's fine. We'll summon, I guess, just another Casper here, or the Kid Brave. Yeah, we'll summon Kid Brave. Then we're going to use these two to exceed summon into the very large Acid Golem. Let me go Battle Phase. 13. And then GG. Nice. Thank you for watching, have a perfectly balanced rest of your day, and a happy new year. Adios.